first, uh, thanks to the to give me a chance to talk about this. My name is Akiro Misani in Osaka University. And today, I'm going to talk about with this title. So actually, uh, this talk is about the practical security of QKD. And so far, uh, enormous theoretical and experimental progress have been made on secu practical security of QKD. And now, someone says that uh, QKD is now on the global commercialization. However, uh, the security of most existing implementations of QKD has not been rigorously established yet. Why? The reason is that actually the security proofs so far make ideal assumptions on the user's devices, so Alice's source device and Bob's measurement unit. So, but these kind of ideal assumptions are hardly be satisfied if there exist some imperfections in the devices and even stroppers potential side channel attacks. So if you look at the measurement unit at Bob's site, there exist many side channel attacks that break the uh, security of actual QKD systems completely. However, now we have the measurement device independent QKD that completely solve these kind of programs. And thanks to MDA QKD, we can realize truly secure quantum communication without making any assumptions on the measurement unit. So yeah, that's very good news. On the other hand, if you look at the source device on RC side, of course in source device there exist many side channel attacks and potentially even side channel attacks uh, imperfections. However, the almost all the security proofs so far do not take into account the kind of uh, typical imperfections or major imperfections like the modulation errors at RC source side. In that sense, the security proof with practical right sources is not satisfactory. And basically, this talk is mainly focused on the security proof, practical security proof, accommodating the imperfection at Bob's uh, Alice's side, especially for the modulation errors. And from now, I'm going to explain the previous studies so far about the practical security of QKD with accommodating modulation errors. First, I explained the GRP and security analysis in 2004. And suppose that we consider the phase encoding VBH4, but any other encoding scheme can be explained similarly. And if there exists no phase modulation errors at RC's side, the, the qubit space of two consecutive policies are positioned like this. So sending four states have rotational symmetry in ideal case. On the other hand, if there exists some errors on the phase modulator, uh, so red point in the figure. Uh, and, and for instance, the, the error is, for instance, the 3.5 degree. In that case, from this figure, you can see that the secure key generation length is decreased down to about half of the one of the perfect phase modulation case. So from this figure, we can say that the, even under the small amount of phase modulation errors, the achievable distance a drastically decreased. So this is a very big program in the GRP security analysis. In order to solve this GRP security analysis program, recently, in 2014, the raw storyland protocol has been proposed. So first, I explain the main result of the raw storyland protocol. And from the right figure, uh, even if there is a small amount of phase modulation errors, we can see that such our modulation errors do not significantly influence on the resulting secret key rate. So from the right figure, you can see that the almost three lines are almost overlapped with each other. So the loss tolerant means that the loss tolerant against the small phase modulation errors. And the reason for the big improvement from the left-hand left side, so GRP security analysis, to the right-hand side, is that Alice and Bob utilized the basis mismatched event in order to estimate Eva Stolper's information. The basis mismatch event is are the event where Alice's basis choice and Bob's measurement to the Bob's basis choice are the different. So of course such um, basis mismatch event are discarded in sifting sifting step in standard BBH4. However, uh, in order for the tight estimation for Eva Stolper's information, such basis mismatch event are useful. Also, uh, the, basically, the Rostron protocol, Alice's basis and bit information choice are from three, not four, which is not typical. The, the reason for the three sending states is that the three sending states are enough in order to estimate the best robot information. So, yeah, actually, the thanks to MDA QKD that we can overcome the security uh, program in the GRP analysis. However, even for the, this Rostron protocol, 
there are some problems that need needs to be solved in practical situation. So from now I'm going to explain the program that this Rosland protocol has. Okay, so actually the Rosland protocol, the assumption of the Rosland protocol is that the phase modulation error in the phase modulator in the answer side uh, follow the IID distribution, namely independently identical distribution. So the Rosland protocol can cover the phase modulation error. However, the such an error is restricted to the IID error, namely uh, if the phase, uh, yeah, phase has imperfections, the probability distribution of the phase is uh, the same and independent. However, the, this kind of assumption is, has a program that this IID is hard, hardly be satisfied in actual setup because of the time-dependent noises in the phase modulator or correlations among the, par among the policies. And even if the, the phase modulation error follow IID in reality in real world, uh, it is very hard in finite time in, to guarantee this kind of IID assumption. So the problem of the Rostran pro proof is that it is not clear how to apply this kind of a security proof in order to guarantee the security of actual QKD systems. So this is a program in the Rostran security proof. So, and so what we have to do is that we need to establish the security proof with more relaxed assumption on the source device. So this is actually the motivation of this work. And our contribution is that, that we make the, uh, we re remove the IID assumption on the modulation device, and we, instead we make a potentially exp experimentally testable assumption on the modulation device, and we prove the security of the protocol against coherent, atta coherent attacks in the finite key regime. So you can see the detail on the archives soon. And now I'm going to explain our assumptions on the security proof in the modulation devices. Okay, so, so in the protocol, we use the two modulation devices. The one is the phase modulator, and the other is the intensity modulator. The phase modulator is used to encode the basis and bit information, and intensity modulator is used for the decoy state method. So here we consider the three intensity setting, but arbitrary number of intensity setting can be explained similarly. Our assumptions on the security proof in the phase modulator is as follows. Our assumption is that the number of phases that lie within the interval, the red lines on the left hand side. So, and we call that the pulse whose phase lie within the interval as antax signal. And we call the pulse whose phase do not lie within the interval as tag signal. So what experimenters need to estimate in order to guarantee your assumption, security assumption, is that the bound on the untax, number of untax signal and the number of tag signal. So, so actually the intervals is what our assumption on the security proof. So the advantage of this kind of assumptions is that we do not care about the probability distribution of the actual phase, right in. So even if the probability distribution of the phase are different for each trial, or even if the actual phase uh, correlate with another phases, even in that case, our security can be covered. In that sense, the, our security can ca accommodate the non-IID phase modulation errors. So that's the first advantage of our assumption. And the second assumption is that the number of untax signal and the number of tax signals are potentially experimentally testable. So yeah, these two are the advantage and assumption on the phase modulator. So similar to the assumptions on the phase modulator, our assumption on the intensity modulator is that the number of pulses whose phase lie within the interval and number of pulses whose, phase, whose intensity does do not within, lie within the interval. So in addition to the interval assumptions, uh, from the technical reason, we assume one more assumption that the tact event occur independently of, independently of the, same, the chosen intensity. However, as long as the intensity lies within the interval, uh, our security assumption cover the situation that the intensity is correlate with each other. So these two are the assumptions on the modulation devices. Okay, so from now, I'm going to explain our simulation result. So with, the, with these two assumptions, we prove the security of 
the real strand protocol against coherent lags in finite queue regime. So first I explain the finite queue, finite queue length form and detail to how to derive these parameters, three parameters in the formulation are seen in archive. So in the key generation formula, there is uh, S1U, which is the Antax number of ZBS detection event from the Antax single reporting emissions. And EPHU uh, is the leaked information for the Antax single reporting emissions. And the lambda is the number of bits uh, error correction for error correction. So let us briefly explain how to derive the assumption, uh, how to derive the parameters in the key generation ranks. So S1U, for S1U, we extend the decoy state method based on our intensity interval assumption. And basically our decoy state method is, comes from that nature communication paper. And also for the leaked information to if we measure the leaked information as the phase error rate. So yeah, we drive the upper bound on the phase error rate to prove the security. Okay, so next I'm going to explain the key generation and rate against distance. So from above, uh, we depict the parameters in order to draw the key generation rings. And our assumptions on the phase modulator is that the plus minus one, well, plus minus one degree range. So from the left bottom figure, that we assume the interval of the phase as in total 3.4 degree. So, so this, this value comes from the experimental paper in 2015. And for the intensity interval, we assume the 3% intensity fluctuations for the first decoy state and the signal state. And also the weakest, weakest decoy state, we assume that interval from 0 to 0 0.001. And the tau, in order to calculate the number of tag signal, uh, we, in the left figure, uh, we depict the secret key rate with different tau. Tau is the probability of being outside the interval of phase modulator and intensity modulator. And from the left figure, the dashed line is the when Alice's number of sending pulses is 10 to 12, and the dashed line is that the when the number of pulses sent by Alice is infinity. So the different colors, the red is the if the when the, num the probability of being outside the interval is five times 10 to minus seven, and the blue line is that if the probability of being outside in double of phase and intensity modulator is two times 10 to minus nine. So from this figure, we can see that if the intervals of four phases and intensities are guaranteed by, the, by five sigma confidence level, the more than we can realize more than 10, 100, 100 100 kilometer secure QKD is possible with a reasonable number of signal transmissions. And also, if tau increase, which means that the number of, pulse, number of tag signal increase, the tag signals become programmatic, especially in the high loss regime. So next, I show the simulation result when the intensity fluctuation is plus minus 5%, uh, which is more practical in practical case. And even if we assume the plus minus five intensity fluctuations with guarantee the five sigma confidence level, secure QKD about 90 kilometers is possible with a reasonable number of signal transmissions. Okay, so finally, uh, this is the conclusions and outlook. And our main, con main conclusion of our work is that we removed the IID assumption on the modulation devices and prove the security of restaurant protocol against coherent attacks in the finite key regime. So actually, what the experimentalist needs to estimate in order to guarantee the assumption of our security proof is the intervals that actual phases and intensities by in. So the advantage of our assumption is that we, need, we, need not, we do not need to characterize the detail about the phase modulator and intensity modulator, such as an error distribution and independence among the pulses. So with the potentially experimental test of assumptions, we show that the, within the reasonable amount, number of signal transmittance, uh, more than 90 kilometers secure communication is possible with the, the practical intensity interval and phase intervals. And the future outlook is that actually the how to guarantee in actual experiment for our intensity interval and phase interval is actually uh, out of scope of this work. So 
it is very interesting how to do that, how to estimate in actual experiment from a theoretical aspect and experimental aspect. Also, it is also interesting uh, to apply our, our secu uh, theory to another QKD setting, like MDI QKD settings. So thank you very much. Thank you, Akihiro, for that uh, talk. Do we have, uh, we have some time for questions? Questions? Okay, well, we'll thank the speaker again then and all the speakers.